So, oh, yeah. What's going on, dudes and dudettes? So, USC basketball did get another big time transfer in the way of DJ Rodman from Washington State. Yes, if that last name sounds familiar, he is the son of NBA Hall of Famer and multiple time champion with the Chicago Bulls, Dennis Rodman's son. So, that's pretty cool. Obviously, not a bad idea for him to come and join up with another popular. NBA player's son to play down here in SoCal. So either way, he was a pretty solid, pretty good player up there in Washington State. It just sucks that they always seem to lose players to other teams, kind of like how he's doing. No one seems to stick around and, you know, want to get more. He knows there's going to be more eyes on USC basketball this season coming up in the fall. So might as well try to get out there, even if he isn't starting. He might be the first guy off the bench as well, but Either way, I know a lot of people have projected him as a starter already, so we will see. Definitely will be interesting, but definitely really excited about this USC basketball team coming up in the fall. And then Duke also got a commitment the other day. I believe he went to Stanford, another ex-Pac-12 player transferring, but his name is Neil Begovich. I believe that's how you say the last name. He didn't really say a position, but he looks pretty tall, so I'm assuming he's a power forward. Slash center. I know they've been trying to get a really good rebounder slash more athletic scoring type of center out there. I know they've been trying to get some other players to transfer, but they just ended up choosing other places. But I think another really good guy from Kansas recently just went into the transfer portal who had like four blocks against Duke in the first game of the year last season. So Maybe that's another guy to look at because a lot of uh, ex-Duke players, or sorry, current Duke players are texting him and, you know, commenting on his posts and stuff right now on social media. So you never know, he might be coming as well, but we'll have to wait and see about that. And yes, a surprising turn of events here. JJ Redick, obviously from ex-Duke fame, he's the main reason why I started liking Duke in the first place when I started watching college basketball back then. But and he has a really good podcast, Old Man in the Three, right now on YouTube and everywhere you could get your podcasts. But yes, he recently ended up going out for the head coaching job of the Toronto Raptors. I guess they looked at him, interviewed him, see if he'd be a good fit for them. And we'll see. I know they're going to be looking at other people. I thought it was kind of weird that they let go of Nick Nurse, who recently won them a championship a few years back when Kawhi Leonard was there. But yeah, overall, I think that will be pretty awesome for him. He never really mentioned it in his podcasting. And I don't know, he's working with ESPN right now and still doing his podcasting weekly. So who knows? We'll probably not get that anymore because he has to be more focused on his team and probably can't talk about any other players and all that stuff. But if it's for a head coaching job, might as well see. And it's up in Toronto. They have a nice, good nucleus there. The ex-coach, I guess, just couldn't get it done the past couple years. But... We'll see. Definitely very interesting right there. And then, yes, I mentioned a couple of the past videos that Bronny James has recently committed to USC, but the other day he did officially sign with USC basketball, so that's good. At least they have him officially committed and ready to go this fall on campus. But then I think they said a nice stat out there that it's the first time in program basketball history that they've ever had two McDonald's All-Americans on the same team. Obviously, Isaiah Collier, the number two, number one player in the country overall, and Bronny James, the top 10 or 11 player as well. So that's pretty awesome. At least USC is finally getting some recognition and building up their basketball program up, you know, not just the lackluster it was before I even started getting into it, but once they started playing better and the, the players were better as well, I started, you know, paying more attention and luckily they have been good so far. So we'll see what they can do in the near future. And yes, the all NBA teams came out, offense, defense, whatever, all that stuff. So Jason Tatum was named to the first team, all NBA. So that's really cool for him. Obviously he started the year off great. I think a lot of people are almost penciling him in as the NBA MVP, which he did not win, but overall, yes, it was a pretty solid season for him. And then LeBron James ended up making the third team as well. I'm not surprised that it's the third team because he did miss quite a bit of time, but while he was out there, he was still pretty good 
during the season, so it's not all that surprising. It is kind of surprising Anthony Davis isn't up there because I don't think he missed as much time as LeBron, but maybe just lower stats and all that crap. You never know, but either way, not too bad, I guess. And then Evan Mobley, the ex-USC player up there with the Cleveland Cavaliers, made the first team all-defensive team, which isn't surprising because he was a top three finalist for the best defensive player of the year award. So not surprising he was the first team, but yes, congrats to him as well. And then Coach K, yes, the ex Duke legendary coach has apparently been named the NBA. He's been named to an NBA special board. I wanna get that correct. I wrote it down. Advisor to NBA operations. So I guess he's not gonna be really running anything, but the NBA has questions about certain things of how to run, whether maybe it's Team USA or certain things they want to implement in the game, like certain, I guess, contests or certain other things to help make the game better. He will be one of the top, you know, authorities they will be going to to see what his input is, which is pretty cool. Obviously, he's just been pretty much hanging out around Duke. Uh, I think he has a podcast as well. It's kind of cool, but. Either way, yeah, just a year after retiring and you're still going back and being involved in the game you love. So that's pretty cool for him. So good luck to him. So you heard me talk about on three and their list of the different programs of the top groups at those positions in all of the college football, NCAA, whatever you want to call it. And yes, USC did finally make another list where they were the top safeties in the country. I think they were like number six on that list, which is pretty good. Not too bad. They were able to add a lot of talent in the past year or so through the transfer portal and they built up a lot of their guys especially with a guy like Kalen Bullock who's been there since he's a freshman so he's one of the top safeties out there anyway so I'm pretty sure that's why they were top 10 no matter what but either way it's not that bad getting on to that list and then yes I mean off or starting off with some miscellaneous news because the charger schedule did come out so I want to end with that. So to end this part of the video with miscellaneous news, apparently Christopher Nolan, obviously, you know, I'm the director of Inception, the Dark Knight trilogy, you know, Tenet, all that stuff. He apparently said in a recent interview that he was literally thinking about since sadly the passing of Heath Ledger that he was going to use like older footage that was never released and like deleted scenes from The Dark Knight and put it within The Dark Knight Rises, the next film, the third film, and try to be able to make that because his story was ultimately going to include that Joker and see what it can do more than, I think, Bane, but it would have been actually pretty cool to have the Joker and Bane there, like the Joker finally has somebody that can take down Batman, which eventually did happen in that movie. But overall, he just said that it would be you know, at some point disrespecting Heath Ledger's performance if he wasn't able to really get his true performance in there and, you know, using, shooting from the back of some other actor so he could get the scene he wanted or whatever. So, yeah, I'm kind of glad he didn't do it, but there was a lot of talk too, even at that time, that they were trying to get other actors that might have looked similar to Heath Ledger in the Joker makeup to try to play that character in the next movie, but... Either way, I don't know. There's a lot of rumors like I think um, Leonardo DiCaprio was going to play the Riddler and all this stuff or even Johnny Depp. That would have been crazy too. But either way, I think we still got a really nice film in my opinion. I know it's not a lot of people's favorite third film, but I still like it a lot. And final miscellaneous news. Yes, sadly, I did hear the other day that one of my top bands from the late 90s and obviously early 2000s when they exploded that I loved a lot and still like to this day some 41 is apparently disbanding. So I don't know what that means. I know when Blink-182 first time broke up, they said they were on a hiatus and disbanding kind of to me means either you're officially done and not playing anymore, or you might be trying to put a, together another new group of players to be in your Sum 41 band. I don't know, but hopefully we'll get some more news about that. I know they're on a big time spring slash summer tour with the Offspring and Simple Plan as well, who are some really good alternative punk rock bands that I like a lot too, which I've never seen all three of them in concert, so I'm kind of hoping to get to that concert. I think they're gonna be playing at Irvine in August. Yeah, 
something around there. So definitely trying to get to that show. But either way, yeah, it just sucked. You know, they have a double album coming out called Heaven slash Hell or something like that. So I don't know. We'll see. It's going to be pretty epic, I hear. So looking forward to that. And yes, the Chargers schedule came out last night. So I'm going to read through, tell you, you know, hopefully I'll be able to give a record at the end of this to see what they can end up finishing with. But I don't know. I still think even though this is a pretty tough schedule, they could still make the playoffs, at least in the wild card. So let's get through it. They start off with Miami at home, which isn't too bad. So we'll see. I know we beat them last year. Second game is at Tennessee, which we also beat them last year, but they are a bit more healthier now too. Then the next game is at the Vikings, which will be pretty interesting. My uncle's favorite team. And then their fourth game, they're gonna be at home against Vegas. That's pretty good. And then they're gonna go on a bye week, week five. Week six, they're home for Monday Night Football against the Cowboys, which should be pretty interesting. So we'll see how that goes. But definitely one of their first primetime games. Then they go on the road next week, seven at Kansas City. Week eight, they play Sunday Night Football against half of my fam family's favorite team, the Chicago Bears. So that'll be pretty cool. Next week, they are at the New York Jets on Monday Night Football. So yes. Not only do we do the Chargers get the Packers this year, but they also have to still play against freaking Aaron Rodgers. So that'll be a big time game. Then next week, they're at home with the Lions at the Packers the following week at home to the Ravens for Sunday Night Football. Should be a good matchup. At the Patriots, home to Denver at Thursday Night Football with the Vegas Raiders. Then at home, there's going to be a Peacock exclusive, which I'm assuming this is counting as a primetime game. And it's like on a Saturday, too. But at least we don't have to go all the way up to New York. So they're playing the Bills, which will be a big time matchup. But either way, at least it's home. Then they're at Denver, which would suck because of the weather. And then they finish off the regular season at home with the Chiefs. And yeah, that's not a bad way to end. For some reason, it's to be determined the time and days which is kind of weird but either way that ending i think there's like what six or seven games of afc it might be even more of afc teams so as long as the chargers can take care of business in the beginning half of the season and then they kind of control their own destiny beating up on teams that are either going to be ahead of them or right underneath them to stay away so in the afc playoff seating so it'd be pretty interesting i know it's six primetime games i said that's pretty cool. I think last year they had about five, if I'm not mistaken. Cause I know they were also like flex, right? Cause one of those games was put like on Sunday Night Football or something like that, but then they took one away as well or something also. I don't know, I forget. But either way, they're definitely trying to get them out there, get Justin Herbert out there in prime time for everyone else to see. So either way, it's pretty cool no matter what, but yeah, I definitely see them winning at least 10, 10 games, you know, again, hopefully a little bit more. You never know, because a lot of these teams, yeah, they played last year or recently, and they did get better, so we'll see how that goes, or they will be more healthy than when they faced them the last time, or last year, so it could be a very interesting season, just got to start off hot. They could be 3-1 and one or 2-2, two and two and it could be good or bad to start off this year, but at the wait and see so yes thanks for watching people like and subscribe comment down below let me know what y'all think have a great rest of your day bye go bolts